If you are switching or you are thinking about switching from iPhone to Android, then you clicked on the right video. We are going to go over some things you should be aware of as well as some pros and cons of switching. So if you watch the video all the way through, you should have a better outlook on whether or not switching is the right thing for you. Switching between your phone and computer can be seamless or challenging depending on the devices and operating system you currently use. After switching, if you're a Mac user and you choose to stay a Mac user, you might find it more challenging to move from your phone to your computer, as you won't be able to share a clipboard, hand off work between devices, or send text messages from your Mac if you switch to Android. As well as if you use Apple Calendar on your Mac, you won't receive event notifications on your Android. However, you can overcome this issue by switching to Google Calendar on both devices, which would ensure that you are still notified of events in both locations. Another limitation you might face if you switch to Android is that there's currently no version of Safari available for Android. Consequently, you won't be able to access your Safari bookmarks and your browsing history from your Android. If accessing Safari bookmarks and history is essential to your workflow, you can always install Google Chrome on your Mac and use it the same way with your Android as you did Safari. The only downside to doing that as a Mac user is Chrome tends to use significantly more battery than Safari. On the other hand, if you're a Windows user switching to a Samsung Galaxy phone, you will notice an improvement. You can leverage the link to Windows feature to transfer content between devices and even use your Android apps from your PC. Additionally, Samsung DeX allows you to be able to hook up your phone to a device such as a TV or monitor and basically use it as a full bigger display while still keeping the UI more like an actual computer. Its productivity and overall convenience makes it a feature that once you try it, you would miss it if you ever went back to iPhone. One of the biggest things you should consider, especially if you have multiple Apple devices, is the fact that you are going to lose out on your Apple ecosystem integration. No more handoff, no more copying something to your clipboard from your iPhone and immediately being able to paste it on your MacBook. No more AirDrop but it's not all that bad. The good thing is Samsung has built up a pretty good ecosystem themselves and there are alternatives to things like AirDrop. Go check out some of my other videos on topics of that nature. But one of the biggest reasons for me was the fact that there aren't many, if any, alternatives good enough to rival the Apple Watch and especially the Apple Watch Ultra. If there's only one thing I praise Apple for in this video, it's their Apple Watches, especially, like I said, the new Apple Watch Ultra. Being basically perfect for me due to its durability, style, and overall usefulness when it comes to operating my phone. You've got options to look into and consider such as the Pixel Watch, the Samsung Watch, and Garmin are a few that comes to mind right off the top of my head. Another bad thing is that most Android phones won't last as long in terms of speed of software as well as not getting software updates for nearly as long as Apple promises on their phones. The good thing is if you chose to go the Samsung route and especially with the new S23 line, Samsung is saying that they plan to support the new S23 line for four years worth of updates, which in my opinion is more than enough because most people seem to upgrade their phone every three or four years, if not sooner. Customization is also infinitely better on Android. Specifically, being able to change literally anything you can see inside of the UI is a feeling of power and freedom that you'll gain when switching from iPhone to Android. Good luck is an absolute must have if you enjoy customization and I guarantee you, you are going to be blown away. If you've never used an Android, there's a lot of stuff to customize. When I said you can customize literally anything, I quite literally mean anything. Also, Apple's customer service is widely known to be some of the best customer service around. Okay, that was a bit of a stretch, but compared to Android's customer service, it's miles better. Being able to go to an Apple store in pretty much any bigger city is a peace of mind which keeps many Apple users loyal. If you are coming from an iPhone, then you're gonna notice something. Rather than you having to adapt to the phone, Android adapts around you. You may have trouble letting go to some of the Apple apps you've grown accustomed to, such as iMessage, FaceTime. This becomes even more difficult if you're already subscribed to multiple Apple services like Apple TV, Apple Music, Apple Arcade, Apple Fitness. 
As a new Android user, you'll likely feel a sense of disappointment as you realize that while you may have more flexibility, the Android ecosystem can be somewhat disorganized compared to Apple. This means there isn't a single unified platform where you can conveniently access all of your technological needs, which can be particularly frustrating for individuals who are less tech savvy. As you switch to Android, you'll inevitably come across a greater number of unwanted pre-installed apps and system advertisements. To be fair, you do have the option to remove these pre-installed apps from your device and disable system ads. However, the fact that they even exist in the first place can be quite bothersome and an annoyance if you'd rather not even encounter them in the first place. Charging has remained an area where iPhones have seen little advancements over a significant period of time, while Android manufacturers are now boasting incredibly rapid charging capabilities such as 65 watts, 100 watts, or even higher in some phones. iPhones have remained limited to 30 watts for years now. Consequently, it generally takes iPhones considerably longer to reach full charge, whereas Android phones can go from zero to 100 in just around 30 minutes or less, depending on which phone you have. I hope this video was useful. If you liked it, or even if you didn't like it, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment below and tell me why you did or did not like it. I read and respond to all my comments and I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.